Today, I've got a great friend, a great brother uh, that's going to be sharing the good news of the gospel with us today. Would you welcome our very own youth pastor, Brinson, to the stage? We love him. He hasn't invited me to see Black Panther yet, though, so something, something's up. No. You already seen I'm the pastor. You saw love, him. You. Like, love you. Amen. Amen. Journey Church, Journey Church. How y'all feeling this morning? Before I get started, started, um, today is Sticker Sunday. What is, that's right. What does that mean? That means, it's, it sounds like, uh, Oh, I, I'm, I'm trying to do Jesus. Okay. Ricker, Ricker, Ricker. Okay. We you. So for a donation of a dollar, you can get a sticker for your cars. Okay, apparently, apparently. We gotta get the youth passers mic then. Testing one, two, Jesus, Jesus, hey. All right, all right. Once again, take two. Sticker Sunday, uh, for a dollar, you can get a sticker, and for a donation, we will put this sticker on your car, but if you are like a perfectionist, take it home. <laughs> but we're more than happy to put it on for a donation, and the donations will be going to summer camp to help teens go, <laughs> amen, that's right. Um, to send one teen, just to give you an idea, it's about $400 this year for one teen, and we're like, Y'all keep going up, my God. But it's, su it's a super life-changing experience. Our youth enjoyed it last year. It's, it's a great thing. Um, and I want to thank Pastor Eric and Mary Jo. Great pastors, great shepherds. I, if this was my church, I would have clapped my hands like right there. If that was just, if it was my church. I just want to thank them. Every, every time they give me the opportunity to, to come up here and minister to, to God's precious sheep, it is an honor. It is like, it's the best thing going. I mean, my goodness. I mean, I, this, I don't know about you. I think Journey is like probably the best church this side of heaven. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I could be biased. Let's pray. We got a lot to get into. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, thank you for this time. Lord, I decrease. I ask you to increase inside of me, Lord. Speak through my mouth. Think through my mind. Speak through these vocal cords. Every ear is anointed to hear. Every heart is good ground to receive the incorruptible seed of the word of God. Satan, you have no place, no lot. You have, you, we come against distractions right now in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over this service, over this word. Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you, God, for sending your angels in this place to walk to and fro. So God, I just pray for change, transformation. We pray for souls today, for them to come home in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. So we've been going through this epic series and I don't know, I've really been enjoying it. Like the Bible is just so good. It's just so good and um, what we're going to read today, we're going to go through an entire chapter of Exodus. And how many of you guys know that the Bible is alive? And somebody's like, what does that mean? That means it's active. You can be in different seasons of your life and you're going to hear a different thing because the Lord 
custom makes his word to fit you where you are. And when I read this, this text in Exodus, it, I was just blown away like, holy guacamole. This is, I never saw that. And you know, so I, I'm excited to get into this uh, particular passage. We talked about Adam and Eve. It was the woman's fault. We know. Uh, it was the serpent's fault. It was the serpent's fault. It was the serpent. We talked about Joseph, coat of many colors. We talked about uh, the beginning of Moses. And when Pastor Eric was preaching that last week, I was like, wait a minute. You mean to tell me they was going to kill all the kids? His mom put him in the river. Pharaoh's daughter picked him up, took him back to his mama. That's crazy. That's God. Nobody do that but Jesus. You know, God know how to do crazy things and make it all work out. Amen? Amen. I'm like, that was crazy. And I know I read that before, but how did I miss that? I'm like, he went back to his own mom. God, you crazy. That, that was good. <laughs> so we are going to be talking about crossing the Red Sea this morning. And I'm going to pull some things out of this text that I've never seen before, and possibly you have, but we're going to see what the Holy Spirit does today. Amen? Amen. Who's ready? Who's ready? Anybody ready for the Word of God? Let's jump in. Exodus 14, and we're going to start at verse 3. Y'all pray for me because we're going to go through this whole chapter, and if somebody go to sleep next to you, just give them the holy nudge. For Pharaoh will say of the people of Israel, they are wandering in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. I want you to keep a pen, put a pen in your Bible, underline it if you got your Bible, or you know, if you got the Bible out, you can like tap on it and then underline, underline for you. It said, I will get glory over Pharaoh. Amen. And they did. Verse 5 When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people, and they said, What is this we have done? that we have let Israel go from serving us. They was thinking about their pedicures. They was thinking about their Chipotle. They say, you know what? They, we got it too good to let this good thing go. But they are crazy because they just came out of the plagues. Think about it. You got locusts in your cereal. The river turned into blood. The firstborn child, children was dead. And they're still going after these people. I would have threw a party to get those people out of the city. Y'all need to go quick. You, your children, and all your cousins, y'all get up out of here. But, it, but the Lord said he's going to harden his heart. Verse 6, so he made ready his chariots. And took his army with him and took 600 chosen chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued the people of Israel while the people of Israel were going out. Now, you have an army. And we know if if there's a death in the family and it was caused by murder or if we're pointing the finger, we want retribution from our children's death. And I think the men of Egypt was so enraged that they wanted blood of God's children. But somebody should have been smart enough to say, leave God's people alone. But, you know, when you're serving people, you got to take orders, and they had the wrong orders that day. Verse 10, when Pharaoh drew near, 
the people of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, It is because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is it not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. Right here. This is where I wanted to get to. They were about to be free. They were coming out of Egypt with gold, with good clothing, with silver. They had everything a nation could want. And they are the children of the Most High God. They seen God send the plagues to the Egyptians, and they said, why did you take us to bring us here to die? And that really jumped out to me because I'm like, my God, they can't see what happened. And then I had to go back to Exodus 3. Three and nine said this. Moses spoke thus to the people of Israel, but they did not listen to Moses because of their broken spirit and harsh slavery. Broken spirit and harsh slavery. Some of us have had a broken spirit for years. Because we've been enslaved to sin. And now that we're saved, we don't know how to walk in the power of God. We don't know how to, how to live and breathe and, and, and parent and, and be a spouse in the power of God because we've been broken and our, we've been enslaved to sin for too long. But when God brought us out, we didn't fully renew our mind. We were still living in Egypt. I want you to know some perspective is key. Perspective is key as a child of God because the way that you live, the whole world is watching. The way that you live, your father in heaven is watching. The way that you live, the people in your house is watching you. And you might be the only Jesus in your house. You might be the only one in your house walking around praying, saying, God, help me, Jesus, Lord, make a way, all of this stuff. And you cannot walk around with a broken spirit. How many of you know that God is undefeated? Undefeated. Undefeated. He's undefeated. Okay. Keep that in mind. We're going to jump in Genesis 3. We got three. We got to go back. We got to go back to go forward. Go back. Genesis 3, 9. It says, but the Lord called to the man and said to him, Adam, where are you? <laughs> the undefeated God said, Adam, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. And I was what? I was what? The first time fear, that word afraid, appeared in the Bible. Up to this point, Adam has never been defeated. Adam never knew what taking a loss meant. Can you, can you imagine living a life where you never lost? Can you imagine living a life where you believe the impossible? Can you imagine living a life where you, you can do all things? And he said right here that he was afraid. Then he says, because I was naked and I hid myself. 
And the undefeated God said this, who told you you were naked? Journey Church, I'm going to ask you, whatever that thing inside of you that made you broken, who told you that was true? Jesus never said it to you. He said you're beautifully and wonderfully made. He said you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. He said you are forgiven. He said you are the righteousness of God. Why do we walk around living in such defeat when God didn't say that to us? He said, who told you that? Who told you you were defeated? Who told you? Who gave you an opposing word on what I said? Who lied to you is the question today. Who lied to you to tell you that you were less than? So I learned something from that. The first thing is God doesn't want his children living in a place of defeat. I'm going to say that again. Amen. God doesn't want his children living in a place of defeat. That's why he had to take the children of Israel out of Egypt. It said their, their, their minds was broken from slavery. Their, their mind was in bondage. They could hardly believe God because all they knew was making bricks out of straw. All they knew was serving these people. All they knew was serving these people that was serving another God that if you look in the natural, their God must be greater because we're in slavery. But God didn't want his people, his children, his chosen people living in a place of defeat. So he had to raise up Moses. Number two, God doesn't want his children thinking and reasoning from a place of defeat. When you are living this life, and how can you say you're believing God, but you're thinking it's from a place of defeat. We live our lives and think from places of past experiences and past losses, but the Bible told me that old things have passed away and behold, all things have became new. So I have to think in another way. I have to elevate my thinking. We have to elevate our thinking because God is with us. It said, if God is with you, who? can be against you. Number three, as God's children, our perspectives are so important. Why would I say that? Because the Bible says faith without works is dead. And then it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. Why is our perspective important? I'll tell you why. Why didn't God take somebody out of slavery and lead them out of Egypt? Our God is undefeated. He doesn't work in the boundaries of defeat. He doesn't work in the boundaries of lack of faith. He had to find somebody whose mindset and perspective was not in bondage. He took out somebody from his chosen people and placed him in Pharaoh's house. He placed him there because he had to teach Moses how to win. He had to teach Moses that you are above and not beneath. He couldn't raise up a deliverer without a delivered mindset. Moses was different. He, wasn't, he was never a slave. He, w- he didn't grow up a slave. He didn't grow up a slave until he chose to be with his people. But think about this. These people were in slavery. He's in Pharaoh's house, never tasting defeat. If you're in the king's house, you're never going to lose. You're going to have everything you want, when you want it, They had Amazon Prime before it was made. (laughs) 
He put in his order. He like, look, I, uh, uh, uh. And they said, two day delivering. Moses said, kill them. Uh, I need that now. This is Pharaoh's house, and we get what we want when we want it. Now, now, now. In our state mission statement is now. So he didn't know any of the slavery. He didn't have that mindset. God had to raise him up where the people were winning, where the people knew what it meant to be liberated in their mind. That's why he had to raise up. God planted a secret agent in the enemy's camp to undo what the enemy did. I got one, amen. That's okay. That's okay. Number four, if all you know is defeat, that is what you will live in. They could, a, a deliverer couldn't come out of slavery because all he knew, all they knew was defeat. All they knew was we have to serve. We have to serve these people who serve this other God. Nobody was able to raise up until somebody's perspective had to be changed. Let's get back to Exodus. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you when? When? Tomorrow's not promised. So when is God going to work this out? Somebody in the back like, what did I miss? Certain things are taught and certain things are caught. Certain things you got to catch. Amen? Moses had to be raised up in another man's house to carry out the will of God. Exodus 14, 13. And Moses said to the people, fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see you should never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You and you have only to be silent. Wait, the Lord will fight for who? No, I have to take matters in my own hand. The Lord will do what? No, 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 no. I got to call these people at Walmart and cuss them out. No, no, no. The Lord is going to do what? No, I'm going to report everybody on my job because I am the son of God and they ain't going to treat me in a type of way. The Lord is going to do what? These people on Collins are going to cut me off one more time. One more person got one more time, and I'm rolling this window down. The Lord is going to do what? My spouse treat me like a dog every day, and he's going to find out what it means to have hot stuff on the table today. The Lord is what? The Lord <laughs> is going to fight for you. In that part, Moses gives us instructions in time of trouble. Number one, he said, fear not. Fear, mm, thank you, Jesus. Fear not. When the diapers hit the fan, you can use that when you get home. When the cat bite the dog, when everything break loose, Moses said, fear not. We had a dear brother, have a, had, he had an a accident on his job. This week, he got hit by a car. I'm talking about towing him up. Boom. He didn't even see it coming. His mom texts me. First thing I said, Father, in the name of Jesus. Because it wasn't a time to be fearful. It was a time to believe in our God. It was a time not to call. Look, if you call anybody in a time of trouble, you better call somebody who know how to pray. You better call somebody who got, who got, a, a, a direct line in the office, in the over office of heaven, in the red phone, the one that's covered in the blood, and Jesus pick up. Amen. And I told that woman to God, I said, look, I know you are his mama. 
And I know mamas, they hurt for their children. I said, but when you go in that hospital, you don't go in there as his mom. You go in there as a chosen prayer warrior of God standing in faith. Knowing that God is going to work it out. Because faith without works. Faith, no, no, no. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we're going to link up our faith. And we're going to believe it's God who's able to do anything. So she walked up in there. She called me back. She said, it's, they said it's looking bad. I said, well, I don't care what they say. Who's reporter? We're going to believe. I love the doctor, but Dr. Jesus know a little bit more. Amen? So then the third call, somebody say three. Third day, three. Third call, she said, hold on, here you go. I said, well, praise the Lord, brother. He said, we still doing lunch today or what? I said, so what they say? He said, I got hit. I'm going to just be sore. But no bones was broken. The doctor said, I look good. I, I feel fit. I feel like I'm 20. How many of you know that God is still working miracles? Today, the Bible. Moses, the second thing Moses said is, stand still. Don't be moved by what we see. We get too wrapped up, too crazy when stuff go wrong. It's a stand still and watch the salvation of the Lord. See the salvation of the Lord. What does that mean? That means I don't care what happened. I got to focus. My eyes got to be on heaven. The Bible says the cares of this world can choke out the word of God in us. So if the cares of this world can choke us, I can't focus on what, what, what social media is saying. I can't focus on what Fox News is saying. I can't focus on what CNN is saying. I have to look at heaven and say, God, tell me, direct me, show me, because you are my salvation. Now, you, now some of y'all know, if you got a call, talking about one of, your, one of your friends got hit by a car. You're like, okay, somebody, let's go make the arrangements. Did he have insurance? Because if he had insurance, it ain't going to be too bad of a day. We're going to cry, but after that, you know, somebody popping bottles. Now, we miss Pop Pop, but whew, he did us right. Glory to God. Men get insurance, glory to God. Don't tell them how much it is, you know. We don't want to have no funerals. Let's get back into Exodus. Exodus 15, amen. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Why you cry, man? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Journey church, go forward. Go forward. Whatever the Lord has in your heart to do, to advance the kingdom of God, go forward. Stop being scared. Stop having a, that, that bondage mindset that, oh, I failed in the past. Oh, things are passed away. You are in a new season of life. You're not the same person you was five years ago. You're stronger. You're wiser. You've been in church. You have, look, you believe God more, than, more now than you did then. Go forward. Well, I haven't joined a small group because I haven't found anybody that I connect with. Well, have you made yourself friendly? For, for goodness sake, smile at somebody. I don't know about the small groups. I don't want everybody at my house. Well, clean up. <laughs> and we move on. Tyler, you got my back, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Lift up your staff and stretch out your hands over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them. What I, what I interpreted, I, I'm going to make these Egyptians so dumb 
They're going to have to follow you. And again, he says, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. He came to the Red Sea. He looked at it. He looked at the million of people looking at him, crying, complaining, talking about we about to die. Moses had to look up to heaven because those people are crazy. And he said, stretch out your arms. Stretch out your rod. And he separated that sea. And it... <laughs> This was an obstacle because it was nowhere else to go. And sometimes obstacles are just opportunities for God to get the glory. Yes, it is. We had another sister in here who was in a wheelchair and she just like, I don't know. It was just an opportunity for God to get the glory in her life. Whatever the, op whatever the obstacle is in your life, oh, I'm struggling with addiction. Oh, I'm struggling with this. These, whatever it is, I want you to lift your eyes to heaven and know whatever it is, that whatever it is trying to hold you down, whatever it is trying to tell you that you're not good enough, whatever that obstacle is, it's just an, it's just an opportunity for God to get glory in your life. Because a year from now, you're going to look back at that thing and like, man, God is so good. If I can just tell you where he brought me from, if I could just tell you, how he delivered me. Then the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of, the Egypt, of Egypt and the host of Israel. God had the first smoke screen. And there was a cloud, the cloud in the darkness. And, and it was lit, young folks, teens, it was lit. And it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. So they could have been three feet away from each other, but they didn't know. Because God had a whole cloud. Now, isn't that strange? You're walking through the Red Sea. Water this way, water that way, and there's a big cloud in front of you. Now, nobody in Pharaoh's army was like, hey, bruh, this don't look right. <laughs> I feel like, you, in the, I got in the Star Wars people in here, in the Star Wars people, a few. Do you remember that scene where the man was like, it's a trap? <laughs> I'm like, nobody in Pharaoh's army was like, this, this looked like a setup. Now, I don't know. I mean, I just, I, I'm just like, none of the, it was no smart horsemen and chariots. They was all like, let's get them, let's get them water, water, black cloud. Nothing? I'm like, nothing? Maybe that's just me. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove back the sea by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters being a wall to them on the right hand and on the left. The Egyptians pursued and went after them. And then somebody said, we need to flee. Somebody got smart or somebody got scared, whatever the case may be. But at that point, they was going after the children of Israel. And somebody said, their God is real. And I believe at that point, that's when God got his glory. And at that point, that's when it was over for Pharaoh. Because he said, I'm going to get glory. 
And I, it's so comical to me because I'm like, nobody knew. But the moment somebody got a win that this God was real and that this was a trap, the seas started crashing down. Let me tell you something. Can I, can I tell you that you are greater than the children of Israel? God did these miracles for the children of Israel, and you are greater than the children of Israel. And you're like, Pastor Branson, why would you say that? We're all alike. We're all God's children. Yeah, but the children of Israel didn't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Jesus died for you, rose for you. You had an opportunity to pray the prayer of salvation that they never got to taste. They never got to taste the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And if God in the Old Testament under an old covenant would do those exploits for them, how much more will he do for you? I believe the Lord, he, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. But you know what? The Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Why don't you speak to your situation? Why don't you raise the rod of your word of God to whatever sea and whatever obstacle is in front of you? When are we going to take this word of God and separate our troubles and walk on the dry land, the dry land of the word of God? Walk on the dry land of victory. Walk on the, on the land of, of undefeat. We're going to drop all the way down verse 30. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Sometimes God has to blow our minds to change our minds. They walked to the Red Sea in a defeated mindset. But when God showed them who he was, when they crossed over, they had to know that this God was for real. You need to know that your God is real. You need to know that God doesn't want you living in defeat. He doesn't want you thinking in defeat. He don't even want you driving in your wonderful vehicle in defeat. Because defeat brings fear. Sin makes cowards of men. In this day, don't walk out of this building knowing that you could have victory in every area of your life, but you refuse to because you've been in bondage so long. Break the chains of sin. Break the chains of bondage. Whatever the enemy spoke in your life, it's a lie. Whatever lies people have spoken to you, that's not what God said about you. God kept his promises towards the children of Israel. And he's going to keep his promise towards you. If he said, I'll save you and your whole household, he's going to do it. If he said you will live and not die, you're not going to die. Let's rise to our feet. Amen. Let's bow our heads. And this is the time of the service where, you know, people are ready to go, but I don't, don't be ready to go just yet. While all high eyes are closed, I want your heart, I want you to just meditate on you're victorious in God. And if you have been struggling with any type of bondage, your mind is enslaved, or if you are not saved 
and you you know you came to the right church and you're like, you know what, this is the day that I want God to change my life. This is the day that I want to turn around. I want it all turn around. And I want to really give my life to Jesus today. And while all heads are bowed, I just want, I just want you to lift your hands so I know who I'm praying for. Amen. I see that one. Amen. I see that one. I see your hand. Amen. 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 I see that hand in the back. Amen. And this is not to embarrass you, and we will never embarrass you because this is the point where we know the Lord has been tugging on your heart, and we want you to be saved, and we want to pray with you. So I'm going to ask those people who raised their hand while all heads are bowed, would you come to the front so we can have some of our trained great people to pray for you? Amen. And, and the people around Journey are going to clap for you. Just make your way to the front. I promise whoever you came with will not leave you. Amen. 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 And, and if this message, if you, if you feel like, if you not feel like, if you know that sin has put a wedge between you and God and you feel distant and you want to just renew your relationship with God, I ask you to come too. If you know that this message was for you and you like, God changed me, you come to the front too and we're going to pray for you too. Amen. And if you're looking for a good church, this is, hey, hey, hey. It's, hey, hey, hey. It's a good church. You can come down to and we'll love to pray with you. So let's pray for those who came to the front for everyone in our congregation. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the ones that came forward. Thank you, God, for this word. God, help us to live it out. Lord, I pray that you bless the ears and the hearers and the doers of the word, God. Help us to walk in victory and never live in reason and think in defeat. God, we thank you for Journey Church. Help us to advance the kingdom. God, we pray for a blessed week of favor of you, of Jesus. And God, we give you the praise and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen.